Ours is not a project of forgetting, but rather a project of remembering. As members of the legal profession, we are called upon to bear witness to injustice and to set in motion reparations for harm. New vision for what justice demands and a written record of our evolving social contract. I wanna take a moment to thank every member of our community who's showing up for friends and neighbors, but most especially for strangers, those who you do not know, but in whom you see need and have reached out to offer assistance. That is the role of lawyers. They will be your clients. They need you. We need you. And we need you to show up, right, for us and for them. Thank you for joining us today. I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the lawyer and activist Brian Stevenson. In fact, I think you all read his book, Just Mercy, uh, before coming to law school. Brian Stevenson has said that hopelessness is the enemy of justice. And at times like this, I think it's especially important to remember that sentiment. Um, it is okay and even appropriate and justified um, uh, in days like these to feel all manner of negative emotions. Uh, anger, outrage, grief, anxiety, frustration, confusion. Uh, but as lawyers who are committed to promoting justice and fighting injustice, the one negative emotion that we do not permit ourselves is despair. And events like this one, uh, I trust, are opportunities on the one hand for us to feel and share and give voice to all of those other negative emotions, uh, our, our rage and our sorrow and our uncertainty. Um, but at, at the same time, uh, they are a chance for us to come together uh, in solidarity and mutual support and a shared sense of purpose uh, so that we are not so overwhelmed by those other feelings that we give in to despair. Um, because we, as lawyers, uh, need to commit ourselves to justice and uh, combat uh, the possibility of hopelessness. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to come out and pay respects to the persons whose lives have been violently cut short in incidents fueled by racism and ignorance. Following my brief remarks, we will observe an eight minute and 46 second moment of silence and reflection, representative of the amount of time the officer knelt on George Floyd's neck, eventually taking his life. Let us spend a moment of silence contemplating the weight of the issues at hand. And particularly, I would like for us to contemplate these two things. First and foremost, it's important that we don't dehumanize the victims of this situation. We cannot reduce them solely to a hashtag or a reason to protest. Breonna Taylor was a 26-year-old EMT who worked at two hospitals and, pro and proclaimed that it made her life so happy when she made a difference in someone else's life. We tend to empathize and sympathize with persons who we identify with. The violence that has been occurring resonates deeply with Black persons because Breonna could be our sister, our daughter, she could be us. But I challenge everyone to feel the same connection with the victims. Feel for Brianna as you would feel as you would feel for your mother. Feel for Tony McDade as you would for your brother. Be honest with yourself. In your moment of reflection, if you do not connect with the victims as you would with someone who looks like you, ask yourself why. Secondly, we can't shy away from the fact that systemic racism is present in our society and it adversely affects black persons and other minorities to this day. I could go down a variety of avenues to describe systemic racism, but I'd rather share a personal experience. A few years ago, a group of friends and I were invited to a party in Nassau County, Long Island. We were the only black people at the party. It was a room full of white persons. When we wanted to leave, 
the kids at the party stopped us. They said we should wait until Nassau County PD circled the block. Then as soon as they pass, we should hurry to our cars and go. If they see black people walking outside, they'll stop us. They want to know what we're doing out here. The officers felt it was their duty to monitor the activities of black persons in that area. Many times in my life, I felt that law enforcement's job wasn't to protect me, but to protect persons from me. These past months have only cemented that concept in my mind. My second challenge to you is to honestly acknowledge the existence of systemic racism and its ramifications. It actively functions to treat black persons as lower class citizens with limited rights and limited protections within the legal system. It emboldens certain officers not to think twice when they violently assault a black person. Challenge yourself to see how systemic racism manifests in the world around you and how you can play a part in dismantling it. As we embark on this eight minute and 46 second moment of silence, I implore you to contemplate these two points along with taking time to mourn the persons who have lost their lives. Blessings to you all and blessings to the souls that have lost their lives. We now begin the moment of silence. Now, please welcome uh, Professor Winnie Taylor, who will transition us to a reading of the names of those whose lives have been lost. Um, additionally, the names will be read by myself, Celeste Russell, Cottrell Jewell, Amanda Perez, Lindsay Fox, Kim Aquino, Yasmin Akturk, and Desiree Knight. Before the reading of the names, I want to read a few words of historical African-American wisdom. I begin with the words of Marion Wright Elderman, who wrote in her 1992 book, The Measure of Our Success, a letter to your children and mine, these words. There are no easy answers to the continuing dilemmas of race in America. You must grapple with them like those who have gone before you. Du Bois in The Soul of Black Folk and James Weldon Johnson and County Cullen and Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Ralph Ellison and Maya Angelou and James Baldwin and Toni Morrison and Alice Walker and countless other black bards and writers who speak to this extra black burden. I also ask you to ponder these words from the author Richard Wright, who wrote in 1941, if we had been allowed to participate in the vital processes of America's national growth, what would have been the textures of our lives, the pattern of our traditions, the routine of our customs, the state of our arts, the code of our laws, the function of our government. We black folk say America would have been stronger and greater. The killings must stop. Yes, Black Lives Matter. It is more than a slogan. The rate at which Black Americans are killed by police is more than twice as high as the rate for white Americans. There is so much work to be done in so many areas of American society. I ask you, to do your part. And now some of our students will read the names from a non-comprehensive list of deaths of Black people at the hands of police in the U.S. since Eric Garner's death in 2014. We do not have a comprehensive list. We doubt that one exists, given that it is up to individual police departments to compile and report this data. Celeste will begin. Thank you, Professor Taylor. 
The first name that I would like to start with is outside of that list, but it's special because he was my cousin. In 1988, my cousin was gunned down in Fort Worth, Texas by a police officer. That police officer went on to kill an additional person five months later. When that cop was arrested after the third murder, it was found that he'd murdered three individuals in six months and his gun had two notches on it to indicate the number of people he had murdered on his job. My cousin was notch number two. So this is to my cousin, Martin Williams. Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, Eric Gardner, Matthew Ajibade, Tanisha Anderson, Anthony Ashford, Aaron Bailey, Levante Biggs, Sandra Bland, Freddie Blue, Remain Brisbane, Michael Brown, Patterson Brown, Philando Castell, Wendell Celestine, William Chapman II, Keith Childress Jr., Alexia Christian. Jamar Clark, Stefan Clark, Dominique Clayton, John Crawford III, Tyree Crawford, Terrence Crutcher, Michelle Cousseau, Christopher Days, Albert Joseph Davis, Billy Ray Davis, Brian Keith Day, Michael Lorenzo Dean, Samuel Dubo, Jordan Edwards. Salvador Ellswood, Miguel Espinal, Izel Ford, Ronell Foster, Peter Gaines, Brendan Glenn, Freddie Gray, Akai Gurley, Maya Hall, Eric Harris, Kevin Hicks, Anthony Hill, Dominic Hutcherson, Botham Jean, Tatiana Jefferson, Betty Jones, Lamontez Jones, David Joseph, India Kager. Felix Kumi, Victor Manuel Larosa, Quintonio de Greer, Marco Loud, Assams Pharaoh Manley, George Mann, Joseph Mann, Michael Lee Marshall, Kevin Matthews, Tony McDade, Laquan McDonald, Christopher McCorvey, Natasha McKenna, Keith Harrison McLeod, Randy Nelson. Michael Noel, Paul O'Neill, Dante Parker, Dijon Perkins, Richard Perkins, Nathaniel Harris Pickett, Junior Prosper, Eric Reason, Jerome Reed, Tamir Rice, Darius Robinson, Tony Robinson, Tori Robinson, Troy Robinson, Kaylin Rockmore, Antoine Rose II, Michael Sabby, Jonathan Sanders. Antrani Scott, Walter Scott, Demarcus Seymour, Frank Smart, Alonzo Smith, Silville Smith, Alton Sterling, Darius Stewart, Christian Taylor, Tarot Thomas, Benny Lee Tigner, Willie Tillman, Mary Truxolo, Pamela Turner. May they rest in peace. 